In this presentation, we will be looking at solving power in a series RL circuit. And at this point, we have solved everything for the individual components. We have the individual voltage drops on both the resistor and the inductor. We have current through both of uh, those components. And we have the totals. We have total voltage, total current, and the total opposition to current flow, which is the impedance. So solving for the powers on the individual components or the totals, we can use any one of the three power formulas as long as we are using the correct numbers. For instance, if we wanted to solve for power through the resistor and using I times Z, we could use the 2.15 amps of current flow times the 103.2 volts of resistive voltage and that will give us power through the resistor. We could use I squared times R, um, for instance, uh, power through the inductor, 2.15 amps squared times the 28.26 ohms of inductive reactance that would give us power through the inductor. And if we wanted to solve for total, we could use E squared divided by R, or 120 volts squared divided by 55.7 ohms of impedance. So whichever formula you use, as long as the correct numbers for the individual components or the totals are used in the right place, then you will end up with the right answers. Taking a look at the triangle that we're building, it has a couple of different names. Now this will be a power triangle that we're going to be building. And the power triangle has a couple of different names for each side. So this is still going to be the resistive side of the triangle. And the resistive side has a couple of different names. It will either be watts or true power. So the reactive side of this power triangle also has a couple of names. That would be volt amps reactive or VARs, or the second name would be reactive power. And then the last side, your, your totals, is going to be volt amps or apparent power. So now that we know the three different sides, regardless of what they're called, you can take two sides and solve for the third side, just like all other triangles that have been used. So let me remove this stuff for calculations, and we'll go over that. So the resistive side, if we want to find true power, we'll just use I times Z. And what I did is I used I times Z for all of them. So um, just as long as we're using the correct values. So for the resistive side, it'll be 2.15 amps of current flow times 103.2 volts of resistive voltage. That will give us 221.88 watts. So we're going to repeat that um, again. I times Z, and uh, we can solve for the reactive side or the bars. Once again, ensuring that you're using the correct numbers. 2.15 amps of current flow times 60.759 volts of reactive volts will give us 130.63 VARs. Now, for solving the totals, 
we can use a power calculation again and we can go I times Z which would be the 2.15 amps of current flow times the 120 volts and solve for power that way or we can use in order to solve for the total power we can use one of the power calculations we could go I times Z again so that would be 2.15 amps of current flow times 120 volts and that would give us our total power or we could apply Pythagorean's theorem which would be the watts squared plus the var squared to give us the total and it provides you a means to prove it also so I times E or 2.15 amps of current flow and this is going to be for total power times 120 volts will give us 258 uh, volt amps. Now, we could take the values and apply them into Pythagorean's theorem. So the volt amps would be the watt squared plus the var squared. And if we took the 221.88 watts squared plus 130.63 VAR squared and the square root of that, the number comes up to be pretty much the same, 258 volt amps. And that is a power triangle.